Okay. Das war der kleine notwendige Smalltalk, um euch aufmerksam zu machen, weil ihr steht schon eine Weile hier. Vielen Dank fürs Warten. Lieber Roger Bolzhauser, lieber Jan Bewilder, der rückt jetzt zwar jetzt weg, aber der gehört natürlich genauso mit nach vorne. Liebe Freunde, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, ich begrüße euch und Sie recht herzlich zur Eröffnung der Ausstellung Roger Bolzhauser Transformator 2 und freue mich sehr, dass wir heute Abend trotz der Umstände, also also ich glaube, heute sind es besonders äh, äh, interessante Umstände. Das Wetter hat uns die letzten beiden Tage wirklich in Atem gehalten, muss ich sagen. Dann haben wir natürlich die besondere Situation immer noch mit Corona. Das heißt, wir müssen das, äh, um den Regeln zu entsprechen, äh, draußen machen. Und wir haben hin und wieder, das kommt bestimmt noch, fährt hier bestimmt noch ein äh, lautes Feuerwehrauto vorbei. Aber wir werden das trotzdem zusammen meistern, äh, glaube ich. Also ich freue mich, dass wir trotz dieser Umstände die Gelegenheit haben, heute Abend diese, wie ich finde, sehr außergewöhnliche Ausstellung nicht nur zu, zu eröffnen und zu sehen, sondern auch ähm, zu diskutieren und das nicht nur unter uns, äh, sondern eben auch äh, gemeinsam mit Roger Bolzhauser. Roger, nochmal ein recht, recht herzliches Dankeschön an dich für das Kommen. Ähm, und wie immer werden, haben wir natürlich auch einen Gast hier, der uns äh, seine Ideen oder seine Perspektive mit auf den Weg gibt, äh, damit wir das, was wir sehen, etwas besser verstehen. Und deshalb begrüße ich nochmal Jan de Wilder. Ich freue mich, dass du gekommen bist. Very warm welcome to you as well for coming to Berlin. Bevor ich das Wort jedoch an Jan de Wilder übergebe, möchte ich zwei, drei kurze Kommentare zur Ausstellung aus meiner Perspektive machen. Diejenigen von euch und von Ihnen, die die Arbeit der Galerie vielleicht schon ein paar Jahre verfolgen, werden wissen, dass das bereits die zweite Ausstellung von Roger hier in der Galerie ist. Aber es ist dann nicht eine, sag ich mal, beliebig irgendwie zweite Ausstellung, sondern es ist eigentlich, wenn man so möchte, genau eine stringente Fortsetzung der ersten, wo nicht zuletzt ja darauf hindeutet, dass sie den gleichen Titel äh, trägt wie die erste Roger, die du hier hattest. Damals hieß sie Transformator 2. Diesmal heißt sie Transformator 2. Äh, damals hieß sie Transformator. Diesmal heißt sie Transformator 2. Und ähm, Roger, ich erinnere mich noch genau, wie wir vor acht Jahren, denn so lange ist es her, uns sehr lange über den Titel unterhielten. Transformator klingt erstmal relativ äh, technisch und ähm, wir haben eine Weile gebraucht, bis wir uns darauf verständigt hatten, dass der Titel treffend sein würde. Und ich war gespannt jetzt in Vorbereitung, wie die Ausstellung jetzt lauten sollte und äh, war froh, lieber Roger, dass ähm, offensichtlich die Lösung, die wir damals gefunden hatten, ähm, dass äh, sie auch für heute noch aktuell ist ähm, und wir eben die Ausstellung Transformator 2 genannt haben, weil ähm, es geht in Rogers Arbeiten immer um ein permanentes Transformieren. Und obwohl die erste Ausstellung, die hier zu sehen war vor acht Jahren, äh, primär auf das gebaute Werk äh, von Roger äh, fokussierte, ähm, sehen wir heute offensichtlich natürlich Skizzen, die ein ganz anderes Medium darstellen. Ähm, aber es geht letztlich doch immer um die gleichen ähm, Prozesse. Und man kann sagen, dass es äh, bei Roger sozusagen in immer während des Kreisen sozusagen um äh, Probleme, Fragestellungen, Artefakte äh, geht, um eine Antwort zu finden, die möglichst viele Lösungen einbindet. Und auf diese Weise äh, kann man schon sagen, dass sich äh, Kunst äh, Entwurf und Bau sozusagen in einem stetigen Parallelprozessen zu einem gemeinsamen Werk entwickeln. Und dazu muss man wissen, dass obwohl uns Roger Bolzhauser primär als Architekt bekannt ist, dass du dich nicht nur mit Architektur beschäftigst, sondern lange war eigentlich gar nicht klar, ob du wirklich auch Architekt werden würdest, weil du hast schon mit Beginn deines Studiums unter dem Einfluss ich sag mal so, interessanter und gewichtiger Persönlichkeiten wie Beuys, Kiefer, Reine oder auch den Schweizer Vertretern des New Express begonnen zu zeichnen und auch diese Zeichnung auszustellen. Also es sind Dinge, es sind parallele Stränge, die da stattfinden. Und das Interessante ist, ich sage mal, das ist ja mal ein bisschen, manchmal ist es kompliziert,
kompliziert, wenn der Architekt versucht, Künstler zu sein oder Künstler versucht, Architekt zu sein. Aber in diesem Falle, glaube ich, ist das Besondere, dass du von Anfang an versucht hast, oder von Anfang an beide Stränge gleich verfolgst und gleich treu sozusagen auch geblieben bist, beiden mit gleicher, beide mit gleicher Intensität ähm, betreibst, sodass man eigentlich deine künstlerische Arbeit nicht ohne die Architektur denken kann und die Architektur nicht ohne die künstlerische ähm, Arbeit. Aber ähm, wir sehen in der Ausstellung ja nicht nur die wunderbaren 120 äh, Skizzen, sondern zu der Ausstellung gehört auch ähm, diejenigen von euch, die schon drin waren, haben gesehen, es gehört ein äh, Film äh, dazu, der sozusagen ein architektonisches äh, Statement vermittelt. Es gehört unübersehbar natürlich dazu, dieses wunderbare Artefakt äh, da, was auch, äh, wenn ich das richtig verstanden habe und äh, es bei der Planung bleibt, äh, was auch gleich sozusagen partizipativ benutzt werden kann. Es handelt sich um eine Stampflehmwand, die hier seit Montag errichtet wurde, die vor zwei Tagen mehr oder weniger wegzuschwimmen drohte, aber sie wurde wieder errichtet. Und es gibt nachher, glaube ich, zwei junge Männer, die denjenigen, die sich dafür interessieren, dabei behilflich werden, mit diesem Stampfer, der sich da befindet, wirklich sozusagen diese Wand mit ähm, zu vollenden. Und ähm, was ich interessant daran finde, an diesen zusätzlichen Dingen, ähm, die äh, noch Bestandteil der Ausstellung sind, dass es eben nicht nur um Kunst geht. Ich habe es eben schon gesagt, dass diese Wechselwirkung, sondern dass es, ähm, Roger beherrscht auch die Kunst äh, des, des Bauens. Nicht zuletzt ähm, findet, äh, finden sich die Ergebnisse wieder in der Monografie, die ähm, jüngst erschienen ist. Also was heißt jüngst? Sie wurde heute Mittag angeliefert, ist also Druck äh, frisch, ähm, ist hier auch zum, das darf ich sagen, zum Vorzugspreis in der Galerie nur heute Abend zum Vorzugspreis äh, zu erwerben. Ich freue mich, dass äh, die Verlagsleiterin Andrea Wiegelmann äh, auch äh, zugegen ist, die für diesbezügliche Rückfragen äh, zur Verfügung steht. Und bevor ich das Wort an Jan de Wilde übergebe, möchte ich mich natürlich noch äh, bedanken. Ähm, zuerst, lieber Roger, äh, bei dir. Ich freue mich sehr, dass du zum zweiten Mal die Einladung nach Berlin äh, angenommen hast. Das ist wirklich ähm, ein seltener äh, Fall. Ich, ähm, äh, wir haben seit ungefähr einem Dreivierteljahr sprechen wir über die Ausstellung und ich bin dir äh, persönlich auch dankbar, dass wir trotz der pandemiebedingten Wirren, die wir alle in den letzten anderthalb, dreiviertel oder ein Dreivierteljahr äh, durchlebt und durchlitten haben, äh, dass von deiner Seite nie ein Zweifel dran, äh, daran gegeben hat, dass wir heute Abend äh, hier ähm, die Ausstellung ähm, zusammen eröffnen werden. Und ähm, das, äh, du machst die Ausstellung natürlich nicht äh, nur alleine, sondern du hast dein Team. Ich weiß nicht, ob du nachher noch was dazu sagen wirst, aber ich möchte mich an der Stelle vielleicht bei den Personen äh, auch schon bedanken, die hier unmittelbar ähm, vor Ort auch gewirkt haben. Hier Nina Flückiger, Sophie Kotter. Wo seid ihr? Ihr seid irgendwo. Ähm, und, da, da. und das sind die beiden äh, Felix, das sind die beiden äh, jungen Männer, die nachher hier euch ähm, behilflich sein werden beim Vollenden der äh, Stammflehmwand. Ähm, ja, und ähm, jetzt gleich übergebe ich das Wort an dich, äh, lieber Jan. Äh, Jan, to introduce you um, would mean um, carrying coats to your castle. Um, so I think just just a few sentences only uh, to you as a person. You founded um, together with Inge in Wink um, in your Talieu, uh, DVB, the architects in 2010 and since uh, 2019, uh, you have your, you, you changed the office a bit. Um, you uh, run it together with, uh, with Inge. You have, uh, taught at many, many very interesting universities. And since 2017, as far as I remember right, uh, you were teaching uh, at the ETH Zurich. And this is a place where you got to know Roger, as far as I know, so a small world in a sense. And um, But you're not only known for your amazing architectural work and your work as a curator. You, are, you have a second uh, passion. This is drawing. And uh, that's why it's now a wonderful 
for me that the last time you was at the gallery, it was uh, five years ago, uh, you was also here for talking on an exhibition which was featuring drawings uh, by New York-based uh, architect, over architects, um, and I'm happy that you came here a second time also for um, talking on drawings. I am curious. Okay, this is the moment uh, to say thank you um, for listening and to hand over the mic to you, Jan, or to you both. What is the idea? You start. Okay, it's uh, something with a mic in front uh, to talk with a mic in front. And uh, thank you, Ulrich, for having invited me to talk about on the work of Roger. Of course, you half-sized already what I all wanted to say, for example, talking about the title Transformer 2. That part you took already, but that's okay. <laughs> Doesn't, don't worry. <laughs> there is enough of other interesting things, so just to give an introduction. I know these introductions are mostly boring and take too long, so I try to keep it short. Um, first, maybe I want to pay your attention to this marvelous book that goes together with this exhibition. Uh, we came now driving from, G from Strat uh, uh, Stuttgart to Berlin, and I had it on my knees, constantly PDF, to prepare uh, the day of, uh, of the evening of, of, of today. And uh, I met this uh, editor, congrats uh, on that book, uh, graphical designer, I have to say, not editing house. Uh, but having said that, what, um, why I'm happy to be here tonight is because, in fact, maybe somehow I can pick up parts of the little talks Roger had here and there, me, here, Roger, me, and, and also with Inga at a certain moment, we had together about this fact or this fact of what this drawing means to us as architects. Um, we, we have to say, and luckily, and, and especially these last years more and more, it's true that architecture becomes uh, something which needs to consider its conscious minds on everything, ecology, the world, climate, everything. We are in a very responsible era, which keeps us maybe for a moment, luckily, a little bit away from, let's say, the origins of architectural thinking as has been discovered last decades on typologies and everything. That's another talk for another beer. What I wanted to talk about is especially the fact that I believe that works of Roger, Roger, Roger Bolthauser has a marvelous team. I described that in the book. I mean, Roger Bolthaus is not only himself, it's, it's a whole practice. But on the other hand, the practice is made by people. So again, even all the individuals of the practice. But I do think that all the people of the practice also will agree that there is something going on which is what I believe to have forgotten or to have not been spoken out enough. Roger told me today when we were sitting, it's my outcoming today. Huh? It's my outcome today on drawing. And I think that's exactly where it is about because I do believe and I see that in the work of Roger, if I can say something, you can say maybe it's nasty what I say, but the, Roger is to me the typically non-Swiss Swiss. Swiss huh? uh, being now for more than a couple of years into to, into the Swiss realm, of course, you start to understand and to see things. And I'm very puzzled by the fact that Roger's work and his team's work is in a certain way so embedded in this Swissness, in this understanding how to work with nature, resources, everything. But on the other hand, he is not at all. He doesn't belong, my opinion, to that school of the Swiss architecture because he made it it's himself personal. And there, I believe, is the clue, possibly, as he does this outcome tonight, but he did it yet at many other moments, silently, after a couple of beers. The clue to me is there that Roger has, yes, this alter ego that is fundamentally part of the way he approaches these things. And there I bring, he brings to me that point where I believe that architects and architecture as such has, of course, this today more, and in, in fact, ever already, but today more than ever before, this um, responsibility 
to what we create in this world. And for example, recently in Zurich, you have this talk on let's stop, let's stop building. I would say, okay, let's agree on that, but give some wild cards, and I would give you the first wild card to keep on building. Because what you do there is fundamentally what it is about, the urge, the time where we're living in. But on the other hand, also, whatever is the responsible talk, the argumentation to everything, you're still on with form. You create form. You dare to bring mullahs to things, you dare to bring frames to things, you dare to bring really the liberty of the form onto the material. And there I believe, maybe I can't prove it, but one can prove it by the work as you see it. There I believe this moment of freedom is the most important key to that. And this moment of freedom happens, my idea, and it's maybe an Hinein interpretation, happens thanks to the fact that you draw in that way. Is it silently or only in the realm of your office, now in the realm of this gallery presentation? The fact that you draw there, you define the position of what I believe the architect should be. Totally conscious mind, understanding that in the whole debate we have in this world today, we are the ones, the architects, to be able to bring form into the debate, but to create that form, one has to be free. The architect must be able not to be directed by all these arguments and all these regulations and all these expectations, but has to be able to act free in it. And I believe when we look to these drawings, of which I've been seeing many before, but never this amazing amount of drawings, here you in fact um, confess totally that you're a professional at all, but you are amateur still. And the amateur is not, has to do with the fact that it's not that you want to be artist as such, but that you understand that the art of drawing is the key to the freedom to be an architect that lays the cards just a little bit different. And that these drawings that are not opposite to, let's say, the profession of making, but just give the ability to change, to change what you make. If I see this, I, 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 I will not go into a talk like explaining now the work of Bolthauser's architects as such. But on the other hand, it does explain to me how it comes that my opinion, my point that he is the non-typical Swiss or the typical Swiss non-Swiss, uh, makes is late in the fact that he seems to create around himself in his practice, at home, drawing at night, a kind of freedom by which he just repuzzles the whole scheme architecture can be. Can you agree on it or not? So you think it's, I mean, that's it. Now I, I'd like to hear a little bit more uh, about, from you about a couple of next things. If one looks to the drawings, there are many architects that draw, but what speaks gigantically out for me in your drawing is the materiality of the drawing itself. So the drawing is there on a piece, a sheet of paper, found, envelopes, you use many envelopes, and then you see the media you use, the pencils, the charcoal, the, all these things. I cannot, in my mind, I cannot disconnect it, and honestly, I'm happy that this, this form work is here tonight, because when I was in the car, I said to Inge, there is a relation between what we saw at Sitterwerk at that time, namely the beauty of that form work, so how that thing is made, of course, I mean, it's, as I know, it's based on traditional understanding, but on the other hand, you expose it also here tonight explicitly. So my, my point is, and, and, and I will add to that, I couldn't know that before, if I see how you make the frames, materiality in the pencil, as also materiality in the architecture, in this case, ram to earth, but I also could talk, for example, for your, un, maybe it's now all in the book, finally, why, and such and so on, the glazed bricks that constantly come back. And I'm fascinated, or I would like that you tell a little bit more about, if you look to the graphite of the pencil, and you look to the sediments of the 
of the rammed herd, to me there is a kind like of unspoken, maybe maybe you say not at all, Jan, it, it just happened. Not, I'm not true. Your pencil and your drawing is very heavy also. But at the same time, how you do it, it becomes light. And again, with the rammed earth also to me, it's, it's light at the same time because it comes in layers, it comes in... And maybe you don't want to see anything about it, but I'm fascinated about the layering of your drawings and also the layering, if you look to your facades and how you connect them, you each time use same materials, same media, you reshuffle them again, but they are very there. They, are, they have their weight, they have their substance also in the drawing. You know, your drawing is not a typical architectural drawing, not at all. I mean, we can, we can list them all, huh? the types of architectural drawings of interesting colleagues, very interesting drawings, but there is a total other expression in it. Can you tell us a little more about that? About that heaviness of the medium? Or do you say, like, not tonight? Let's have a beer first to answer that. After you, Johan, it's always difficult to say <laughs> something. Yeah, um, maybe I try it in another way. It's uh, maybe it starts with this, yeah, with your words that you say. Was a, it's always a circle, you know, and that's a little bit what I learn when I because at first I draw. I was not an architect. I was I start with I don't know fourteen or something. And it's after, yeah, when I get close to 20, I start to redo the same paintings again and again and again. I did it with photos, I did it with everything. I just go over it, over it, over it, and just always looking for a new answer or a new can or the, a new middle of this painting. And it was, in a way, it was never ending. So one of or there was uh, some drawings here, which I draw since 30 years. The same. It's always this circle. And in a way, it was kind of I was, I was trained in that to to unuse old paper because you knew you need. I couldn't start with the white paper. It was not possible. Uh, and of course, if I found the earth, it's it's not a white paper, you know. It's and then for me it was clear that it's something which deals with that what I anyway did. And um, with this circling, I start to design. I design in the same way. It was for me it was clear there is never you build something, but it's not the end. It goes on and it goes on and take my windows to the next building, and I try to transform it do it again and turn it and turn it and this was in a way clear and this I took from that and not from professors or I don't know so it's just a way of dealing with design finding form finding an answer finding the right answer knowing that I never will find the answer because I did it again already in drawings so but it gives me in a way the freedom yes and and um, uh, coolness to just go on and uh, and I could go easily to the house Rauch with Martin and just talk about the window and say, maybe this window is wrong. We have to move it. It's in the next building. I move it. I let it away. This wall needs more space. And this is for completely normal for me because I go on and go on and learn and learn and learn. And I think this is, in a way, at the end, it's a normal process. I believe in a, it's just a creative process which you go on with your themes. And this is maybe what you was yeah. asking for, I don't know. I, I, I think also there, there Roger, what, what, what gives there, I think the, the when I looked to your work, and I cannot name all the buildings exactly, but it's a, it's a sports school, mm. where, oh, is it sport? Yeah, it's a sports school. What I want, what I said also before, in architecture, as, as, as very clearly last decades, much has been a do about typology, about order of things, in fact, the kind of renaissance of thinking of the classical ideas. I think that, for example, in your work here and there, you see also that you're very aware about knowledge, about how columns and I can slander and, and everything. And then all of a sudden there is a big window frame, a sliding door that can move in front of it. Okay. It's like there to me, and that's the interesting part. You say, I know it. 
but now I change it. And how do you change it? You don't change it with the knowledge, but with the freedom. And possibly the freedom, I guess, that comes along with the fact that at a certain moment you're there making drawings that guide you to another constitution, order of things, than the order that comes out of the professional thinking. And then you come just purely with the idea of composition, but without education, with a kind of freedom, which I believe we can turn back into what you see here. It's never without understanding what it's about, but it's always with a certain freedom you take. And I do think that's, that's, that's what I see. I don't know, I, I almost have to say, there is much more to, to say about, but I do think that this exhibition there, if you say I'm, I'm coming out tonight, especially does frame that coming out. And I like that, I want to underline that because I think this is important, again, in this frame, we are all in like architects and young people, students, young architects, that we have to be with the urge of time. But what we should underline with such an exhibition and such a presentation of work is that at the end, one as an architect, being busy on this urge, should be at night, at each weekend, working like this in silent, to make possible to give other answers than just the outcome of logic thinking. And I appreciate that very much in your work. I appreciate that also very much into the Swiss realm, that we see there something that does not fit on one hand, but on the other hand, in fact, actually fits better in the context and not in the culture, but in the context. And I do believe this has only to do with that freedom. Could that be good enough for tonight? <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs>
haben ja, und geschrieben haben. Und falls man jetzt das eine oder andere Wort nicht verstanden hat, das Buch, wie gesagt, gibt es drin. Und da ist alles nochmal in, in Ruhe zum Nachlesen. Vielen Dank für die Geduld und das Zuhören bei den nicht so einfachen Umständen.